Yep, it's another video about Gibson. What's going on everybody, Sean Pierce Johnson here. And today on July 1st, as I typically do when I wake up in the morning and know I'm in for a long day of work, I check my email. Might seem like a weird thing to do, but it helps me get an idea of what I have to deal with throughout the day. And I woke up to an email from Gibson Guitars PR department containing a very interesting press release. Now we in the guitar community have been talking ad nauseum about Gibson ever since the whole Play Authentic debacle went down some two and a half three weeks ago. And yes, we are going to be continuing talking about it because what is presented in this press release is a bit of a pivot from some of the maybe bullying tactics, or at least how they were interpreted by some to be bullying tactics, and give you an idea of maybe what the overall real life goal of Gibson is considering what we've learned over the course of the last couple weeks. So in order to do that, I'm gonna share with you guys the press release that I received in that email and give you my thoughts on what all the language means and what we can expect moving into the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my trusty smartphone and yes, that's my black and silver Les Paul printed on my phone case. And let's just start by looking at the headline. Gibson pivots from confrontation to collaboration. Already, right off the bat, we know what to expect. We know what we're going to be learning about. So let's go to the sub headline. In the process of rebuilding over the past eight months, Gibson has made significant progress and now takes on the challenge of balancing brand protection with music industry collaboration. Since emerging from bankruptcy less than a year ago, Gibson has made significant progress in the key areas that matter most to the guitarists around the world. Now this this next little bit is interesting because there's some bold text here with a bold type clear focus on quality a bold type new collection of original and modern guitars and a more bold type confident dealer and artist base the new team at Gibson have proven they can listen to the market and create new solutions but there is still more work to be done and the new team at Gibson remain on a mission. I wanna just stop right there and kind of give you guys an idea of why this stuff is bolded. Basically, this is a common practice in the PR world where when you write a press release, oftentimes the information that you really want people to understand and really grab, you put in bold type. It's kind of a sort of mental thing that happens to the reader. They see the bold type, up against the normal face type, you kind of see it as more important than the rest of the words. Moving on, while new management is bold type building on the legacy quality and craftsmanship that guitars have come to love and expect from Gibson, they will also bold type continue to manage and attempt to resolve the conflicts of the past. This already sounds really good. We're all familiar with some of the, well, for lack of better term, crap that happened under the previous executive leadership of one Henry J. Now is a new day, we move on. Apart from inheriting an iconic brand, the team have also inherited a host of challenges that they realized would take time to achieve proper resolution. That's a key thing here. Proper resolution, eh, it's kind of like an interesting market speak, but you can basically think of it as win-win situation for everybody, where Gibson wins and whoever's on the other side of the argument, they win out too. A clear challenge has been in the area of brand protection, where a legacy of legal issues exist with both legitimate companies in the industry infringing on iconic trademarks and with illegitimate entities attempting to counterfeit, knock off, and pretend to be Gibson in the market. Now basically what they're referring to there with the knockoffs and the counterfeits are what we commonly call the Chibson, the Chinese Gibson. Guitars not made by Gibson USA or even by Epiphone using the Gibson logo, using the Gibson name, and many of the model names and basic roundabout features to pass off as the legitimate article. And these have started to really get into the marketplace. And that's where we have channels like China Guitar Skeptic giving us some education on what to look for in a counterfeit guitar or a Chinese made guitar made to be an exact replica of an authentic Gibson or American made instrument. Over the past eight months, the team have successfully dealt with over 4,500 counterfeit and knockoff guitars coming from overseas. That's quite a lot right there. That were clearly designed to confuse the consumer into thinking they were buying a real Gibson. Since November of 2018, there have been dozens of counterfeit website takedowns 
also designed to confuse the guitarists into thinking they were entering a legitimate official website. On a weekly basis, Gibson receives multiple queries and concerns from guitarists misled into purchasing what they thought was a genuine Gibson that turned out to be counterfeit. Now, there is where they really do have some sort of obligation to protect their intellectual property because these instruments are not being made to great quality coming into the marketplace and you have customers contacting Gibson saying, what the hell is up with my guitar? When all of a sudden Gibson's like, wow, you got duped and you bought a fake. Unfortunately, this is a very real dynamic that brands like Gibson and other iconic brands need to deal with on a regular basis. This is true. The main area of brand protection on these types of issues is with trademark ownership, understanding, and assertion. Hence our recent attempts to communicate our position, which was predominantly focused on these rogue overseas players in the market. If left unchecked, these situations can lead to continued consumer confusion and ultimately affect the integrity of an entire industry. Now, I feel like that last phrase may be a little bit strong. Uh, I think that we see plenty of great instruments coming from that area of the world, the Far East. We have great manufacturers in Korea. Uh, we've seen Malaysian factories start to come into the fold. So it stands to reason that Really what we're concerned about is making sure that if there are factories producing guitars under a certain name, they have to be quality. But if they're producing fakes and knockoffs to try to make a quick buck, that's where the problem is. And it can affect the industry. I definitely agree with it there. But it does come off as being a little bit of too strong a statement. Let's move on. Recently, there has been a wide spectrum of both support and criticism with the approach that has been taken by Gibson in the market regarding brand protection. Yes, like anything, there are two sides to every argument. While there are clear lessons to be learned about tone and legal explanations, you think? The past few weeks have provided a real-time opportunity for Gibson to start bold type, making the pivot from less legal leverage to more industry collaboration with appropriate levels of awareness. Basically, with this particular statement, it sounds like Gibson has answered their own question. They know what they need to do now, and what it doesn't involve is it doesn't involve serving somebody with a legal notice. With regards to other guitar brands and companies in the marketplace, Gibson has filed specific lawsuits over the past several years with the intention of Bold protecting its original trademark rights to avoid consumer confusion in the market. All of the recent attention on the few lawsuits in process stem from several years of legal action initiated well before the new leadership arrived in November 2018. This is very true. The Dean Guitars lawsuit, which they in fact reference in the next sentence, was started in November of the prior year before the new leadership took effect. With specific regard to the inherited and ongoing legal dynamic with Dean Guitars, the new Gibson team, Bold, have made several attempts to communicate with them directly to avoid a prolonged legal battle. That's nice to hear. Gibson has genuine intentions of constructive resolution that could be beneficial to both sides. And that's very refreshing to hear. It's nice to know that the new leadership, at least according to this press release, is not interested in a long lawsuit. And believe me, long lawsuits and court proceedings can be expanded out ad nauseum without any sort of actual solution being come to. The recent situation has led the team to reevaluate their approach going forward. Thank God and with the intention of finding more constructive solutions to managing brand protection in the industry. Over the past few weeks, Gibson has made significant progress in reducing counterfeit attacks, and they have entered into creative collaboration agreements with key boutique guitar makers and other related industry parties, a clear indication of their intentions going forward. Now, this is the part of the press release that has me the most interested, and I'm gonna tell you why. Essentially, what that statement says to me is that Gibson understands that for the last few years, they've needed to make some improvements, and in that amount of time, a couple small builders have come up in the world, and they have in sort of inherited the throne, I guess you could say. I know that there are plenty of builders out there building 
spot on 1959 styled Les Pauls to the specs that everybody seems to want. I know personally, I've played a couple Les Paul style guitars from Rock and Roll Relics that I have really enjoyed. I've also played Les Paul styled guitars that have come from smaller builders like Gil Your Own, uh, even Ron Thorne, who now works for the Fender Custom Shop, was building Gibbs, a couple Gibson-inspired models when I was first introduced to his brand. So right there you can see that the influence of Gibson throughout the guitar building industry has been very great to the point where these smaller companies, recognizing that Gibson wasn't doing what they really should have been doing, decided to take their place. And quite frankly, in that amount of time, Gibson lost out. Now, up until this point, this has all been just marketing speak. It's all been part of a press release. The last little bit is a direct quote from JC, James Curley, new CEO and president of Gibson himself. And I quote, I am proud of the progress we have made with our attention to quality, with the launch of the new collections, and with our renewed engagement to our Gibson authorized dealer base. At the same time, we acknowledge there are still legacy challenges to solve going forward especially around brand protection and market solutions, says James J.C. Curley, the new president and CEO of Gibson. Quote, it is time to make the modern day shift from confrontation towards collaboration whilst protecting our brands and we are committed to making things happen starting now. Basically what that statement says is everything the press release just said in a much more condensed platform. Now, I don't know necessarily how to feel about that, but the fact that they end the press release by giving it a personal touch is a very good idea. Now, if those were actually the words that uh, JC dictated himself, fantastic. It means that he understands the mission. And if he's the guy steering the bus and driving the company forward, they know the ultimate destination and they're not going to lose sight of it. So that's one big time plus for this. It will be interesting to see exactly what these collaboration agreements are because as the way that I can see it, we see collaboration in pedal building all the time. Uh, most recently with uh, the Life pedal with uh, Sun, Reverb, and Earthquaker devices. We've seen it with the Boss and JHS Angry Driver, and we're probably going to be seeing it a lot more in the pedal world over the course of the life cycle of the industry. Collaboration is just one of the cool parts about music in general. Now saying this as a member of the Gibson family and a Gibson guitarist fan pretty much from the beginning of my playing career, the play authentic thing didn't work. It used the absolute wrong tone and was the wrong way to go about raising awareness in the marketplace. But what this press release does indicate is that Gibson is learning from its mistakes. What's even more awesome to understand about the fact that they have learned from their mistakes is how little time has passed from that play authentic video to it being taken down and now them issuing this statement saying, yo, we realize we screwed up. We're gonna try better. We're talking to people. We're making things happen. We want everybody to win. And hey, we're willing to work with everybody. Collaboration is what's going to help the musical instrument industry grow, especially as certain market shares start to die out because certain types of music aren't as popular as they once were. Basically, now is the time for collaboration and not confrontation. The fact that Gibson has recognized that is a big thumbs up for Gibson. However, there are still some questions that I have. Now I wanna hear from you all watching at home. Now that we've dissected this press release and you have a better understanding of Gibson's pledge to move from confrontation to collaboration, what do you wanna know? Do you have certain questions that you feel like you still need answered? And are there any ideas of what you would like to see moving forward with this new collaborative idea? If so, let me know in the comment section below. And if I can get some of your questions answered, I'm gonna try to do it. Thank you all so much for joining me for this quick little video. If you enjoyed it and maybe learned something, go ahead and click the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you never miss a video. Or if you'd like to get access to all of my videos earlier than anybody else and get some exclusive stuff as well, go ahead and join me over on Patreon. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Enjoy the rest of yours and until next time, I'm Sean Pierce Johnson wishing you all out there great tone and happy stomping. Cheers, my friends.